but then so if i try to you know uh stay muslim <laughs> i'd say like um that uh we we don't know where the the real engine is and so the one that you have is not uh, the real one because oh, he, he uh -huh. it was, um it was corrupted but i do not believe that it was corrupted because there is no evidence so yeah i can't take yeah. this day there's no evidence of any corruption nor does the quran say that they were corrupted hi amazing viewers welcome to religious insights and in this video a female muslim seeks to leave islam but she wants only this one thing let's watch this video to find out what that thing is oh uh i don't know who paul is you don't know who Paul is? No. Well, I know he is in the Bible, but uh, I okay. never read the Bible, so. Fair enough. He is a he's an apostle of Jesus, a messenger that Jesus sent out to help spread his gospel across the world, specifically more so to non-Jewish lands and non-Jewish people. What they will, what the Bible okay. calls Gentiles. And usually Muslims have a problem. Well, you never heard you never heard Muslims bring up Paul and or nothing like that in no. a bad or negative way? No. Interesting. Okay. Um tell me what what do you uh what do you know about Christianity? Uh, uh nothing. Maybe it's just that uh, you believe in the Trinity. Okay. What what do you think the Trinity is? I don't know. I okay. never understand. How long have you been a Muslim? Since birth. Okay, so been a Muslim all your life. Um, is that is that would that be the main reason why you're a Muslim? Is because you grew up in a Muslim household and was raised on the Quran and Hadith and the Sunnah and stuff. Yes. Okay. Okay. And you've never, you said you never read the Bible before. Why not? Uh, well, I don't know, but uh, right now um, I've decided to do it since like, um, since I've been watching your videos. Oh, wow. Um, in I started in December of 2023. Mm -hmm. And it's when I discovered Islam for real. Because I was born Muslim, but... I'm not Arab, so mm. uh, I never really um, learned anything like any hadith. Right. But we practiced. So yeah. Okay. So wow. I mean, that's that's amazing to hear. So you you've been watching, you've been watching the videos, and that you know got you interested into doing your own research. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So 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 tell me what have uh has it has it, there have been anything interesting that stood out to you I guess about Islam that you've come to learn you know you, you've watched some of my videos and then you started like looking up stuff and you said that you this is where you've seen the real Islam what 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 do you mean by that by the real Islam uh well I mean me personally what I knew as a child uh, it was to pray and be good to people. That's it. But mm -hmm. I didn't know what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I learned uh, was about uh, Aisha's uh, edge. Yeah. So, so I was really shocked, yeah. of course. But yeah. um, so yeah, I mean, I, I've I've tried to stay on the religion. Mm -hmm. So, like, I guess taking what uh, the Muslim says to to not leave Islam because it's difficult to leave Islam. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, leaving Islam, one, you it seems like you may have a lot to lose, right? You got family, you have community, and yeah. if you were to leave Islam, like even your life could be in danger or. You can lose your family, so it, it's hard, right? It's hard. Yeah. Um, but you know, 
there there's there's assurance you know and I, and you'll find this out when you continue to read the bible jesus gives us an assurance um when you come into belief in him and he says that a mother even mothers will turn their backs on their daughters fathers will turn their backs on their sons brother will be against brother because of the truth of jesus the messiah it's because of this that it'll divide people you know because it'll it truth divides yeah. light from darkness you know and mm -hmm. jesus promises that in the midst of that yes you'll go through that and yes you'll go through trouble but he'll be there with you you won't be alone and not only that but you'll also have a family of believers that pray for you root for you support you and stuff like that um <clears throat> so i i want to know what what you what what do you think about you know muhammad and aisha you know obviously him being 54 him sleeping with her when she was nine years old i know that that wasn't easy to to see huh yeah but um it wasn't easy but a lot of people say maybe she was 18 <laughs> even though i since i saw like your videos i know that she was definitely exactly. nine years old exactly but then they say that um you know it was different back then and uh, the the edge the uh, psychological yeah. part it's yeah. Um, yeah. they try to say they try to say that back then girls maybe matured faster uh than they do now uh, and so aisha even though she was nine she would have been more mature which is an absolute lie is actually we have evidence that people are maturing nowadays faster than they matured back then it's it's so ridiculous yeah. there's no way out of it they can come up they try their best gt they try their best to come up with an excuse to to defend that but there's there's no defense of that you can't defend pedophilia you can't def you can't defend it you know true so uh, let me ask you this and you're being honest do you believe that a prophet of god would do such a thing that a prophet of god would you know kind of use his position to his advantage and you know get with a little girl you think a prophet of god would do that no 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 i don't think that but um i mean didn't like also people uh, of christianity did that oh absolutely not absolutely not oh, okay. let me show you what the bible let me yeah. actually show you what the bible says on this that's actually i'm glad you asked that let me show you exactly what the Bible says on this particular issue, because the Bible is pretty clear on how men and young women are mm. supposed to, you know, get together and win. So this is what the Bible says. Let me go to it's going to be first Corinthians It's actually one of the letters of Paul, one of the one of the messengers. Oh, okay. of Jesus. It's a letter of mm. Paul that we're talking about. So this is what um this is what it says here. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and share the screen. All right. So it's on the screen now. So this is first Corinthians chapter seven, verse mm -hmm. thirty-six. It says, but if any man thinks he is behaving improperly toward his virgin, right? So obviously a man receives a virgin for marriage. It says, if she is past the flower of youth and thus it must be so, it must be, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin, let them marry. So the Bible is clear. The virgin has to be past the flower of her youth. She has to be past that. She has to be mature, right? Both physically and mentally, she has to be past her youth. She has to be a young woman for them to be married. It must be so. But what's a young woman? Uh, so one who is 
physically and mentally mature. So she's physically grown up, you know, she's physically developed and mentally she's developed. She understands what marriage is. She understands what sexual intercourse is. You know, she understands what she's getting into. She's a young woman, Thank you. you know? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what that means. So the Bible is pretty clear. Now, it doesn't give a specific age, per se, but it gives a generality. She has to be physically and mentally mature. She has to be past her youth, right? She can no longer be a youth for, you know, you to be marrying her. It must be so. While in Islam, obviously, you're allowed to, you know, have relations with girls who have not even hit puberty yet. So... Mm. Yeah, uh, the um, I mean, yeah, you. I saw the video where when you showed the verse, mm -hmm. but. So no, what? Yeah. There's no but. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. There is no but. There is no excuse for any of this. You know, yeah. and it's especially this is where. It, it it's um like really serious the fact that it's not christians or people who hate islam that you know it, it, like is showing this stuff the muslim scholars themselves made it so clear that yes this is permissible they made it clear no one can dispute yeah. it, you know i saw the videos uh, the one that said like 11 month old you can marry a <laughs> makes no sense yeah but that's islam and that's what muhammad says is revelation from allah from god on high now i don't know about you gt but i know good and well that that is not a teaching from god i know that i mean maybe it is and we don't know <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, because we're, we're talking about God here, GT. God is morally perfect. He's morally perfect. He is all good. He cannot teach a foul, d disgusting teaching. He cannot give a disgusting, sinful command. We know that this is disgusting. We know that this is sinful. And why do we know this? Because we are made in the image of the true God. The true God has given us his moral compass to where we don't even need a book to tell us that this is disgusting and that this is wrong. We know this naturally because the true God has given us this judgment, this moral compass within us. You know, this is what in Islam, you guys will call it the fitra, your natural disposition. Yeah. So this is how we can tell, this is one of the ways we can tell the true God from a false God, from a, from a, a counterfeit, right? Because God has given us his character. We have, we have, we have, you know, remnants and, you know, little seasonings of his character within us that we can have an idea of what, what's not him. That's how, when we read this stuff in the Quran and the Hadith, we know that this is not of God. It can't be. Especially... Right, so when the problem is, go ahead, go ahead, GT. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, um, the, pro the problem is that, for example, I was speaking like with an atheist earlier, mm -hmm. and he was, well, I don't know nothing about the Bible, but he was talking about a situation where um, it was, I think, David and his wife, I don't know the name. And um, so they had relations before marriage. And so God, uh, I guess, killed the child to punish them. So he was saying, like, isn't that just evil? So, well, yeah, I mean. Well, absolutely not. But this is what you have is where a consequence happens. See, here's a, here's a lot of things uh, that it's people what, don't, don't get. People don't, and especially an atheist, I can't believe that he would even try to say something is evil when he says God doesn't exist. So evil would be 
Um, he, like he's stealing from God to know what evil is, but then using it to argue against God. As an atheist, he can't say anything is good or evil. That's just an illusion. But just to answer the objection here, as you see how God works, God judges by responsibility, right? Responsibility, not really accountability, uh, responsibility. So, for example, you have where, um, where nations would sin against God, right? Nations, their parents, like people would sin against God in a particular nation, leaders and all these kind of people. And because of that, the nation would suffer. Right. The 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 curses of God, the punishments of God, the wrath of God would fall on the nation itself when there's people among the nation who are responsible for the nation sin against God and rebel. They fall. So this happens the same with kings. If a king falls, the people fall. Right. The, the kingdom falls. If the king, the head of the if the king falls, the kingdom falls because that's the responsibility of the king. And that's how God judges. He judges by responsibility, not accountability. David here does something heinous. He commits not only just murder, but also adultery. And because of that, his fallen state, you know, his, um, the result of that is him losing his kid due to a sickness. But it says the child fell sick and God didn't spare the child. You know? But God made the child sick. Oh, yeah, as a result of the sin, as a result of the sin yeah. and the responsibility of David. Child gets sick as of God's judgment and wrath, and the child dies because of the sickness. Yeah. You know? I'm going to show him this video. Of course. But like, I, would, I would bring that atheist here to me. I would love to talk to that to that atheist about about good and evil. I'll be a, I'll, I would love to have that conversation with him because he can't okay, like, I, like I said he can't he can't say what good and evil is if there is no God. If there is no God, where is he getting this idea of what good is and what evil is? Mm. It's just it's just yeah. his opinion that he's making up, right? Okay. So he's stealing morality from God. Who God's mm -hmm. where God says there's good and there's evil. He steals that idea from God to argue against God. It's it makes no sense. So yeah, bring him here. I'll have a conversation with him. Is but that's but this is something, this is something you know interesting to think about. Okay. God mm -hmm. judges by responsibility, not accountability. For example, and here's another way to think about it: the fall of Adam and Eve. Adam, God gave Adam. Mm -hmm. responsibility of 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 the earth right he gave that responsibility to adam and once adam fell he rebelled against god ate the fruit adam fell then we see sin has entered the world death has entered the world mm -hmm. and now human beings are born with the inclination the desire to sin it's now a part of it's now what we urge to do now. We rebel against God naturally. But this happened because our the the person who was responsible over us fell. So because he fell, all of humanity is now in a fallen state. Because Adam had that responsibility. You know? So it's not we're we're not guilty of Adam said Adam's the one who ate the fruit. So I'm not guilty of Adam eating the fruit. I am now guilty for what I do, but I am now living in um a system where I am now reaping the effect and the results of Adam's action. Yes. Okay. So, it's similar to that. Okay. But yeah, so this is what we have here. Keep keep studying, sister. Uh, keep keep reading the Bible. Um, do you own a Bible yourself? You have one, like a actual Bible? No, no. You you just read it online? No, no. <laughs> I think I never, <laughs> I never read anything. I think but you've never you've never I, opened it before. No. Oh wow. Okay, well, let me let me show you a few things that that's in it. I'm gonna show you just a few verses, and then um, I'm gonna encourage you 
I'm gonna encourage you to, you know, get get yourself a Bible. You know, maybe you know it might it might be yeah. trouble to get yourself a physical Bible yourself, but you know you have a you have your your phone, you have your computer, you can just go on. A physical Bible, Bible is, is, I think it's easy to, to have. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. It's easy to get. Yeah, it's really easy. But um, I did hear some uh, Bible verse, the verses. Oh, you heard you okay? You've heard somebody. Jesus, Jesus is the way, the, f the truth, and the life. I mean, you know, the yeah, way everybody knows. That's yeah, yeah. That's a popular one. <laughs> but that's, I, that's actually an I, important I would, one I would to like know. To, yeah, but I would like to know, like, why do you think that Muslims dislike God? Because I did do some research. Yeah. But um, I don't understand, like. Is it because uh, Muslims says that we don't have the, the Injil? Boom. You got it. So, oh, the okay. pro so the problem is, is that the Quran says that it confirms the Injil in the Torah, right? That's, what, yes. that's the Bible. That's what we have, the Bible. So in the Bible, we have the Torah. We have the Injil. We have the gospel. We have all the writings of the prophets. So yeah. here's the problem. The Quran says over and over and over and over again, repeatedly, that it came to confirm, it came confirming the Torah and the gospel and that which the Jews and Christians possess, what they have in their hands. Yes. However, when we go into the Bible, when we read the Torah, we read the Injil, the gospel, we actually see that the Quran actually contradicts what the Torah says. It contradicts what the NGO says. So that would mean that the Quran is actually false because it's saying that these books are true while at the same time contradicting them. So the Quran would be false. So how do but then but then so if I try to, you know, uh stay Muslim, <laughs> I'd say like um that uh we We don't know where the, the real engine is. And so the one that you have is not uh, the real one because uh -huh. he, it, was, um, it was corrupted. But I do not believe that it was corrupted because there is no evidence. So, yeah, I can't take yeah. this thing. There's no evidence of any corruption, nor does the Quran say that they were corrupted. So as a Muslim... Yeah. To say that the Injil was corrupted, they will be going against the Quran. That's number one. In many ways, here's one way. The Injil is the revelation of Allah. The Quran says that over and over, right? Yeah. Well, the Quran also says that no one can change the words of Allah. That's Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse mm -hmm. 115. None can change the words of Allah. So okay. if they're saying that the Injil was changed was distorted, that means that people actually were able to change the words of Allah, which goes against the Quran. So is Allah telling the truth that no one can change his words or is he lying? You know? So that that's, that's okay. problem number one. Problem number two is that the Quran never says that they've been corrupted. The Quran over and over again, matter of fact, it doesn't just say that it confirms the Torah and the Injil, it says that the Injil is in their hands, that they have it, that they have to read it, mm -hmm. that they can recite it, that they have to live by it and observe it. So they have it. It's mm -hmm. not lost. They have it. Yes. So to okay. say that it's been lost mm -hmm. would also be going against the Quran. You know? We cannot win. Can't win. It's 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 what we call the Islamic dilemma. It's a true dilemma. It's tough. There's no way out And of it. Like, can can you bring a Muslim to see what he says? Yeah, sure, of course. You want to watch this? Yes. Yeah, of course. Let's see. Let's see, what we got. All right, Isa, the Black Telect. 
Isa, you there? Can you hear us? Isa, you said that you're here. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Brilliant. How are you doing, brother? It's been a long time. You probably don't remember me. Sorry. My apologies if I don't. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. What was the main question or something? So we have a sister here who wants to know how a Muslim would respond to um, the points that we're making about how the Quran never says that the Torah and gospel are corrupted. Okay, so basically what the Quran is saying is this, that the actual Torah revealed to Moses and the injury revealed to Isa, they were not corrupted. What it does say is people wrote with their own hands, then said, this is from Allah. They didn't just say this is the Torah or this is the Injil. They wrote all these apocryphal texts and load of other different texts claiming their words of God. Now, we agree that some of these texts are apocryphal. There's some we both agree are apocryphal, but we're going further and saying, well, even the ones which you call the Gospels, within them are the true words of Isa and Allah, if you want to say Isa's quoting Allah. But then there's also bits and pieces that they've wrote with them with their own hands, so to speak, and they still claim it's inspired word of God. So, I mean, it's you're more you all are saying the same thing when you say it's from the Holy Spirit or they're inspired, but it's not the literal words of God. So you're basically doing this, you're agreeing with what the Quran says. Okay. So <clears throat> it sounds like you're saying. The actual Torah and the Injil were not corrupted. So they weren't corrupted. They're not lost. Um, but people have made up books themselves that they claim is from God. Yes. So, okay, got you. Which are apocryphal books, the Talmud, you'll say, you know, stuff not written by prophets, right? Um, not just that. You know, like you got extra, if you look in... Uh some of the lists there's like gospels of mary and gospels of thomas and gospels of nicodemus that's that's, that's that, those are all reject been rejected by the church no no that's what, but they called apoc but they called apocrypha correct yeah. no those are called gnostics those are gnostic writings but they still come under the term apocrypha no those are gnostic writings the, apoc the apocryphal writings are you know that stuff before jesus's time no mm -hmm. Where did you get that from? Those, those, the books that you're talking about, apocryphal books. Those are, mm -hmm. those are like uh, writings that, ha like, so there's a big gap between like Malachi and and the New Testament, mm -hmm. and so those, these books, I think your apocryphal books are written in in between that time and stuff like. I that. I think what you're thinking of the term is what was termed apocrypha from a sp perspective. Mm -hmm. But those books also are, Do you know what Apocrypha means, brother? Uh, like hidden or Stuff like that, it has different meanings No, it's more to do with What they call, well, they're saying it's doubtful No It's, not, it's, it's the opposite of what they Call divine No, it's not, bro, that's not what it means Apocrypha means hidden <sighs> So look, the Apocrypha okay, cool. Are before Jesus, that's before Jesus' time the Gnostics are writings that people tried to claim as gospels. Gnostic from Gnostic sects try to claim, you know, put people's names on these gospels that never that are late and were not even alive when you know these things were written. So those are the not those are Gnostics, Gnostic gospels. Um, bravo! You, you know what? You only have to do a simple Google search. Um, the New Testament. Um, apocryphal books and you'll see exactly what i said so that's that's a very right. simple one. okay so um, let's get down to the nitty-gritty okay so these okay. are fake books that people wrote themselves claim that's right. from god and i would agree with you that these that these gnostic texts are false texts and even the church agreed with you that's why they were never included in the canon that's why they were never included in the new testament because of these Gnostic writings. They were never included. The, even the church would agree with you that people wrote stuff with their own hands and claimed it was from God and even tried to put 
apostles' names on there, or disciples of Jesus, their names on them, or Mary, people of prominence, to try to get credit for them. Brilliant. You know, and they they failed. So then what we have here is we're left with what we have as the gospel that has always been for 2,000 years accepted by the church and to all the church history and tradition. And we also have the Torah that has always been Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the Tanakh, which are the writings of the prophets, the poetry books, and all that. So, um, The problem you're having is um, even where the Gospels contradict each other, you would have to then accept, well, one, at least, either they're all false in where they contradict, or one of them is telling the truth, and then well, the others are also wrong. So this well, is... Go on. You're, you're bringing up another argument now. So No, no, no. What, 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 no, you missed... Just... No, one sec. You missed that argument. What I said was we agree on you. certain apocryphal texts, okay? So therefore, we both agree people wrote with their own hands and said this was from God, and we both agree those are not from God. However, within the Gospels, we agree on some bits and disagree on some bits. Whereas right. you might so, say so all the four Gospels are all authentic. We're saying parts of it are authentic and parts of it are written. Yeah. Where, does the, yep. where, does the Quran, where does the Quran say that they have part of the Gospel? It's saying they have, no, you're not getting it. They have the gospel. If you've got it there, but then you write other stuff on top of it, that's still your choice to do so, right? Well, hold on, pause. We, we understood that according to the verse, mm -hmm. number one, it's not even talking about the gospel because you're calling 279. It's talking about the Jews, some people among the Jews that are that are doing stuff. So it's not even talking about the gospel or, or, or Christians or even Gnostic Christians. So, but even if we're, putting this all into one idea here. We already agreed that the Torah and the gospel are untouched. No one's messed with them. No one has went into the gospel or went into the Torah and wrote over them because that's not what the Quran says. People wrote folk, fake books that they wrote themselves. These fake books and claimed it was from God or in yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So the gospel that we have, no one wrote over it. It's the NGO. It's the gospel. But where are you getting that from? All of church, 2,000 years of church history. No, no, no. no. I'm saying from, it's, what I'm saying is, no, no. From the Quranic perspective, mm -hmm. you're superimposing your ideas of what it's saying. No, I'm not. Where it's saying, hold on, where it's saying that Isa had the Injil and you have the Injil. Yes? Sure. Right. Yeah, sure. Where are you getting the idea that that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Well, as you as the whole text, as opposed yeah. to the pieces in it. Well, I, I got you. Yeah, good question. I, why, why do I surmise that that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Because that's mm -hmm. what Christians had. That's always been what Christians have had all throughout Christian history. The gospel has always been Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's always been that. Always. No, the in, brother, this is what I'm saying. The in, as in the, the speech of Isa, because even Revelation has quote words that you would say are the quotations of Isa, correct? Or Jesus, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay. So then you can also include Revelation. And I think part of Acts, is that correct? Is Acts got some speech of Jesus too? Yep. Okay. So it's not just the four gospels. So wherever Jesus yeah, is oh, speaking... No, but he didn't speak in Paul and so on. But I'm, I'm talking about, quite, you know, red letter, the speech, right? Okay. So where, wherever you're having, so, for instance, the words of Esau, if you add to it and say this is also Esau's words and it's not, you've still got Esau's words, but you've added to it. No, if you, you understand, don't, if you if you add to his words, you don't have them. You you mixed them up, which the Quran doesn't say happened. The Quran never says that Jesus's words were mixed up. What do you mean the Quran doesn't say that? The Quran, it says, the Quran yeah, never well, says that people mixed falsehood in the Injil, that people wrote in the Injil, in the gospel, and put fake words in there. The Quran never says this. But where does it say anything about the writing of the Injil? What I'm saying, whether they spoke it, whether they spoke it, 
or wrote do it you down. Believe, do, you believe, do you believe the the gospel was written down? The Angel? You believe it was written? Yes, I do. But okay. we're talking about what what was given to Isa is the point. So when people are giving their own commentary, I mean, even today, people people have to give their commentary to explain it to people that don't understand it. What I'm saying is, what we no. know they were teaching is contradictory, even with within the gospels themselves. So they're contradicting each other. Well, that's that's fine that you can claim that. That's not true. You can claim that, but. A contradiction does not entail distortion, right? Of course it does. Because if you're no, saying... Brother, so, if, if, no, stop. For example, I have a book right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a book right here. It has its editor. It has its author. Okay? I have this book. If this book contained a contradiction, does this mean that this book has been distorted? Like it's not the real book? It's not the real church history book by uh, Bruce Shelley? Or does it just mean that Bruce, Bruce Shelley has a contradiction in his book? No. What it means is that when you're comparing four books that claim to be um, writing historical events of what happened and what was said, if they contradict, then that's an issue. So just saying a book by somebody is random. And we're not you talking know, about contradiction. We're not talking about that. Again, you're changing the argument. You change the argument from distortion to now contradictions. So we're not talking about no, contradictions. Right now. We can get into that later. We're talking about no, no, whether or not it was distorted in the first place. Okay? Right. If this what I'm saying is... Contains, go if it contains a contradiction, does that necessitate mm -hmm. that it's been distorted? If two books or more contradict each other, yes. If they are referring to historical, that's just obvious. I mean, come on. If two do you people, know what a, do you know what a what a what a distortion is? Yes, I do. What, what, so here's so you, for instance, describe, here's the original fact. Distortion? How would you describe? I'm, I'm going to tell you now. Distortion okay. is here's the original facts. It says, for instance, a story in which the Messiah um, was, let's say, placed on the cross, and somebody has got that factual all four have got that factual but then one of them puts on there that the messiah said my god my god why have you forsaken me others don't record that and others may even say that's not even true that there adding that to it is a distortion of the truth okay well, can you so so for example that's not a contradiction that's not a distortion. No, you, of said truth. Distor no, you said distortion. I'm saying it's yeah, distortion that's of not the a facts. distortion. A distortion is your so now, guys. Again, we have gone from corruption of a text to contra texts contradicting each other. That's now what we're going into now. So now we're at, so we I guess we can understand that the Quran is clear that the gospel and the Torah are not corrupted. Can we agree there that the Quran is clear? It's not corrupted because once we concede there, I will. I, I have no problem going to the contradiction part. Can we concede that the Quran is clear that the Torah and gospel are uncorrupted? They have not been changed by people. You asking me that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the original Torah that was given to Moses, the word of Allah given to Moses, the word of Allah given to Esau they can never be corrupted okay did the okay However, did the christians have it and the jews the did they christians, have it yes fact, you know what oh they had it nice so they had in the seventh century the jews and the christians had the torah and the gospel that was that was revealed to the prophets is that correct yes do you know what the Christians had? What they called the gospel in the seventh century? What they called the NGO or the gospel? What do you mean? Because you're you're flipping from the Quranic words to the Christian words. So are we talking the same thing with the NGO and the gospel? Angel is gospel. Angel is gospel. That's what the word is. Right, Angel but it gospel. says in the Bible, example, you know, Jesus. You know went, what? Oh, no, you what, know what? One please, let's, let's not. Come on, brother. Let's. We, no, we, no, 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 bro. Because it's let's, what let's I'm saying is very important. Exactly. You know what the angel is. You know it's gospel. No, 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 no. This that's Wait, what I'm saying. So you're, you're saying that the angel is not gospel. 
What brother? One sec, one sec, one sec. When okay, it says, in, well, I'm, I heard your question. I'm going to answer it with what I was about to say. You're going to understand exactly what I'm saying with these words. In the Bible itself, Jesus says it says he went over here and preached the gospel. So if we is said he went over, does the mean gospel, bro? What's one sec, one sec. So I'm, I'm no, no, just no. about does to say that. I'm gospel? about to say that, brother. I'm about no, to no, say no, it. So he went over there. Yes. So yes, so he went over here and preached the Jew. Now I'm going to move on my point. So in Jill means gospel. Do you know what the Christians had, what they called the gospel or in Jill in the seventh century? As in your, your, well, it depends which group you're talking about because there were different, different groups, right? That had apocryphal books, right? So it depends. But let's, okay. let's go with the Catholics. The Catholics okay. had your four. Uh, gospels over there. Yourself, no problem. Bro. Take care of yourself. You can't. You, you can't even be honest here. So I told you the truth. If you yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Unfortunately, GT, I'm trying to get an honest conversation out of these people, but they keep playing games. I'm sorry. Continue. Let me let me see if I can I get do... somebody who's honest yeah. here. All right. Welcome back, guys. I believe you enjoyed watching this video and I believe you were able to learn one or two things watching this video. Let us know your views about this video in the comment section. And if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please do so. Hit the notification button to be notified each time we post new and amazing videos like this. And um, I believe this lady, she was very nice. She was respectful with her points and the questions that she was able to raise she didn't argue she was just plain was actually ready to learn and it was a very very peaceful one almost to the end before the man came up and uh, i pray she find the right path and also i pray she leaves islam for christianity you notice how almost all the muslim if not all don't like apostle paul and his teaching the truth is that you cannot blame them because first corinthians chapter 7 verse 36 should be enough reason for them to dislike him because that verse spoke volumes against a certain lifestyle of muslim which is the issue of marriage since the issue of virgins matter so much to all these Muslim folks, they believe so much about getting married to virgins or going to heaven to meet 72 virgins. They believe so much on that. So for Paul to speak against virgin in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 36 should be enough reason for these Muslims to hate the teaching of Paul and the person of Paul. And saying the Bible have been corrupted is like saying the whole of Islam the foundation of Islam have been corrupted and also false because if your Quran and your beloved prophet who heard the Bible in between his hands and confirmed that it is the authentic word of God and it cannot be corrupted but you as a Muslim, the 21st century Muslims are now coming up that the Bible have been corrupted it shows that you're trying to tell us or you're trying to prove to us that you are better than your prophet remember in your Quran you said that there is no human being that is as perfect as your prophet. So if your prophet is perfect and he heard the Bible in between his hands and said that it cannot be corrupted, and you're telling us that it has been corrupted, you're only telling us that you're better than your prophet and you, you know much more than your prophet. And if you believe that you are better than your prophet, then you're no longer a Muslim because you have already come in shake. Guys, let us know your views about this video in the comment section and if you are yet to subscribe to our channel, please do so. Hit the notification button to be notified each time we post new and amazing videos like this. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.